Hey everybody, so I just read an interesting article in this edition of The Economist. Um, it's titled Thirsty Planet. It's a special report in there about the situation of the whole water supply on planet Earth, uh, which we all live on, so this concerns all of us. It's more important than the Kardashians. Um, <clears throat> but just to start off uh, in the articles, you know, I mentioned 70% of Earth's surface is water. 97.5% of this water is salt water, so that's eliminated from our use. 1.75% is frozen, so that just leaves 0.75% for our usage. Almost all of this is subterranean groundwater. Only 0.3% of that is on the surface, and 59% of the world's needs are drawn from that 0.3% surface water. So it just shows what a limited supply. Um, now the one of the examples of what's going on uh, in the world, the Aral Sea, one of the worst disasters in history. It's it's a it was once the world's fourth largest saline lake located between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, but it's it's about ninety five percent gone now. There's just a little strip on the west at western edge. Uh, but it started shrinking in the 1960s when the Soviet Union diverted the rivers that fed it for their own needs. And it's so uh, gone now, they've actually renamed it a, a desert. Um, now last year in Cape Town, South Africa, uh, they finally ended a three-year drought with some rain. Uh, at that point, the city's reservoirs were below 20%. Four years prior to that, Sao Paulo in Brazil, their reservoirs were at 5% capacity. They were uh, almost uh, catastrophe level. The United Nations Annual World Water Development Report says that 1.9 billion people, 73% of them in Asia, live in areas where water is potentially severely scarce. Global water usage is expected to climb 20 to 50 percent by the year 2050. The volume of water used, uh, 4,600 cubic kilometers a year, is near the max that can be sustained without supplies shrinking dangerously. A third of the world's biggest groundwater systems are in danger of drying out. 3.2 billion people by the year 2050 will be living with severe water scarcity. Right now, like I said, it's 1.9 billion, but it'll be 3.2 billion at the rate we're going. And this doesn't just affect poor countries, it's starting to affect Australia, Italy, Spain, and even here in the U.S. The three main factors, according to this article, that will drive demand growth will be population, prosperity, and climate change. In 2050, the population will be about 9.4 billion to 10.2 billion, and right now it's just under 8 billion. 70% of water withdrawals uh, goes to agriculture. Some forecast a big jump in demand, while others say a small decline is possible in irrigation due to a reduction in wastage and a rise in productivity. China and Italy represent 30%, 36% of the world's population, but they only have 11% of the fresh water. Um, rainfall and South Asian monsoons feed the subcontinental economic uh, life uh, down there. Declines in stream flow, some from declining rainfall, but most of a result of human activities such as the damming and diversion of rivers for flood control, water storage, and irrigation, uh, which we need that too. So it's, you know, the, now in India, in a town called Akla, the Yam, Yamuna River uh, is just loaded, and this is just outside Delhi, the, the Yamuna River is loaded with trash, industrial pollution, untreated sewage, and humans are using it as a public restroom, so it's loaded with bacteria. India's Central Pollution Control Board in 2016 
said the water there contained 1.6 billion fecal coliform bacteria per 100 milliliters of water. This is more than 3 million times the board's desirable bathing limit of 500 bacteria per 100 milliliters. So again, the limit is 500, but it's at 1.6 billion. Um, now 373 miles downstream from there, uh, the Ganges River joins uh, the Yamuna River at a town called Praya Raj. And there in Praya Raj, uh, there's a Hindu festival every year that draws 150 million people, and that's the largest human gathering in the world. The Ganges River then reaches the town of Varanasi, and this is Hinduism's holiest city. Visitors bathe in the river and drink the water. Also, some cremate their dead there, so it's extremely contaminated. Prime Minister uh, Modi promised to clean up the Ganges, but it remains polluted and hazardous to human health, and the flow continues to weaken, partly because of the hydroelectric dams. In some areas, the flow is down by 50% since the 1970s. 70% of the flow of the Ganges is uh, from the Himalayan glacial meltwater. And the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development said more than a third of the glaciers will be, have melted by the year 2100. And also, as the flow speed continues to slow, uh, that just makes the pollution wor worse. It just sits there. Now, 400 million people, which is 5% of the entire world's population, live along the Ganges River's plains. There's a program called Swatch Bharat, this means Clean India, and it is meant to end open defecation. India leads the world with 600 million open defecators out of 1 billion worldwide. Um, now, Part of the program is to install 92 million toilets with subsidies, and these turn fecal sludge into harmless compost. Now, they, India needs to build treatment plants, but they lack a proper sewage infrastructure, so they can have all the treatment plants, but no infrastructure to get the sewage to the treatment plants. In fact, I read one time that over 50% of just the population in Delhi alone don't even have sewage uh, connected to their homes. Now back in Israel, the Sea of Galilee in the north used to supply most of its drinking water, but now 8.7 million people live in Israel and 5 million more live in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Now, more than 50% of the water is from desalinization plants and treated effluent. Now back in India, there's a serious disease called skeletal fluorosis that millions of people suffer from. Um, this causes their legs to either bow out or bend in and the knees knock. Uh, they can't avoid the knees knocking and some of them their legs look like spaghetti. But uh, this is caused by drinking water contaminated with dangerous levels of fluoride. The World Health Organization says uh, the limit is 1.5 milligrams per liter, but in Churam Nagar, a town where skeletal fluorosis is running rampant, the limit is many times that. Fluoride is naturally present in groundwater, but uh, this is exceeding the safe limits. VK Madhavan is the chief executive in India for water aid. This program um, says the most pressing danger is bacteria pollution, also uh, contaminated contamination with arsenic, nitrates, salinity, and fluoride. Some is natural, but some industrial ep is from industrial effluent, and some leaking from landfills, septic tanks leaking underground gas tanks, and overuse of fertilizers as in pesticides. In order for people to avoid drinking the bacteria-contaminated surface water, they turn to groundwater, which is poisoning them. 
Um, one of the th things I just mentioned, arsenic, causes cancer of the skin, gallbladder, and lungs. 60% of India's irrigation is from groundwater. The Soric desalination plant in Israel is 15 kilometers south of Tel Aviv. 230 this produces 230 million cubic meters a year of water. And this supplies one-fifth of Israel's domestic water supply. Uh, it does lack calcium and magnesium, but that can be rectified. Worldwide, there are now 15,960 salinization plants producing 95 million cubic meters of water a day. There are eight countries that produce more desalinization waters than they withdraw from natural sources. Those countries are the Maldives, Singapore, Qatar, Malta, Antigua, Kuwait, the Bahamas, and Bahrain. Singapore even takes it a step further by drinking its own treated sewage. This is known as new water and that meets 30% of their water needs. Agriculture consumes most water. In Egypt it consumes 84%, in India 90%. The global water footprint according to Dutch scientist Agron Hoekstra uh, includes uh, this in, says that this includes all the direct and indirect water use along the agricultural chain and this uh, amounts to 90 percent of the water used in the world so when you include all the indirect and direct water usage along the agricultural chain the global footprint says that 92% of the water used in this world is, is for agriculture. Um, flood irrigation is a method of irrigation that wastes 50% of the water used. Sprinklers are better, but you still lose a lot in the wind and in evaporation. The drip irrigation systems method are better. Drip irrigation minimizes evaporation and percolation and they are 95 to 97% efficient. Precise amounts of crop protection and chemicals and nutrients can be added as well. Uh, remote sensors can monitor weather, soil, and plant conditions also. It, they are much more expensive so you won't find them in the poor countries as much. Now to illustrate how much water is used to produce certain things, 2,000 liters of water is used to produce a kilo of avocados, 9,359 liters is used to produce a kilo of cotton, 214 liters is used to produce a kilo of tomatoes, um, 4,325 liters is used to produce a kilo of chicken, and 15,415 liters is used to produce a kilo of beef. In the last 50 years, global meat production has quadrupled, so this is dramatically rising. One third of global food production is lost to waste. Lots of, and that's here in America too, it's tons of food is being lost to waste, which means tons of water is being lost to waste. Lots of water is lost through leakage as well, and this isn't just in poor countries. In London, 28% of water is lost through leakage. In Montreal, it's 40%. And we have the same levels of leakage here in America. But they, technology is improving. They do have sensors and smart valves now that can help find leaks. China uh, has the biggest infrastructure project on the planet. It's their south to north water diversion project. It's the largest transfer of water between river basins in world history. Two thirds of the tap water and one third of total water supply to Beijing has come by canal and pipeline from a reservoir 1400 kilometers to the south. And the project continues to grow. Um, in conclusion, this article says, now is the time to improve the way water is used rather than to find new sources of supply. The World Bank estimates that to achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all and to achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation for all and to end open defecation, this 
all to accomplish all that would need about 114 billion dollars a year. 69% of this is for the sanitation. So, 